Yo, yo, yo. What's up, peeps? <laughs> I hope everyone is good. I'm doing good. It's a Miyazaki day. What is this madness? Explain yourself, Lulu. Explain yourself. Um, okay. Feet, 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 foots. We are going to draw them. So, for those of you who have the reference, you members, you lucky people, um, we have four, five images of reference. Basically anatomy breakdowns, not just anatomy breakdowns. In fact, it wouldn't even be fair to call them anatomy breakdowns. Volumetric breakdowns, showing you some of the large ideas of how we can um, we can look at the volumes of the foot because the foot is really complicated in many ways there's a lot going on you know but I think that we can simplify it down a little bit we can look at large ideas and as we're drawing through some of these poses I will of course give you my thoughts um, I've looked at all the the stuff that's available here, there, not all of it. I've looked at some of the stuff that's out there regarding feet. Um, I've got my own ideas. Reality is, right, they're based, they're built up off anatomy. So we're gonna, but we wanna simplify that anatomy. Um, the thing that with feet, feet though is, there's really little or no fat pads right? You, you can, in some extreme cases, obviously get bloated or feet that look distorted almost. Um, but generally speaking, they're a pretty lean part of the body, right? Kind of like the scalp. Um, so anyway, we can discuss, if you've got any questions about the first five images I've put up, the we'll call them the reference images, or not reference, the diagrammatical images, um, let me know, but what I think I want to do is just get drawing, and we'll, we'll talk as we go. So, with that in mind, let's do this. Welcome, new members. Um, Dark Souls director Miyazaki, somewhat famous for suggestive feet shots in game. Is that right? I thought you meant the other Miyazaki. Well, even either Miyazaki doesn't wouldn't make sense to me because I don't have the frame of reference. Um, Lulu bringing in the anime references early this this session. I see. I'm going to assume that's anime. It's Earth Day in the US, says Tina. The day we pretend to care about the natural world. Well, there's caring and then there's doing, right? It's a big problem. And I think a lot of us feel quite helpless in that. The ideas about what we can do for the planet Anyway, that's another subject, isn't it? Where is the reference material, asks the Invisible Man. Um, the Invisible Man, if you are a member, and there might be a join button right below the video, if you're a member, you will find a link to all the reference in the community chat. All right. Just read, if you read in the description of the, the video, should explain it, I think. Okay, well, it's as epic as anime, they're video games. Lulu, you might as well just be speaking alien. It means nada. Games are Japanese, okay. I'm so out of the loop, it's not even funny. 
All right, we're gonna, we got this first pose. Now I've moved to the photo reference, okay? Let's be clear. The, the top five images are just for your, you know, for you to look at and to use as an, anal an analysis tool for what we're gonna discuss. We're moving to the first reference photo, which is essentially, you could say, a side view um, of the foot. So I'm gonna draw well, for the large part what's in in the reference and I'm just gonna come in with some very very basic volumes at this point we'll probably I didn't start the timer I don't think it really matters I don't know how long these are gonna take they might take 15 minutes, they might take 45. I'm just gonna draw and we'll see what happens. So I'm almost just kind of drawing just to get a, just a general sense at this point of where the large, large ideas are. So I'm down to about the ankle here. This is where the tibia, you can almost see the flat plane of the tibia there. And then down here, what you're seeing in this region right here is actually the fibula, the bone of the fibula. Sitting right around that region there and going up this way, right? Alongside the tibia. At the back, we can see the Achilles tendon moving that way. We've got a series moving up the calf, we've got a series of muscles, um, essentially flexors and extensors in the same way that you have on your forearm. Um, <coughs> we'll, we, if, when we see them and that, I'll, I'll try and give you guys a sense of what it is that we're looking at. Um, but right now, so the heel is going to be about here. I'm drawing quite, quite large. And I'm actually gonna draw down roughly down to kind of where the toes connect. I like to keep the toes almost like a separate idea from, from the rest. coming down this way. Um, so this whole region in here, right, from where the tibia is here, down this way, this is a, a series of bones. This, this whole volume kind of sitting in here is a vo series of bones, the metatarsals. Um, meeting up with the tarsals which are sitting in this region in here. So you've got tarsals, metatarsals, then coming down this way. Um, this sphere, or not sphere, what would you call it? Like egg shape is for me at least, you've probably seen me draw it a lot when we're drawing, you know, doing regular figure drawing. That volume is really important. This volume is really kind of the, one of the keys for feet looking like feet and not looking just kind of like weird sandwiches. Now what I'm actually doing here is kind of creating, you know, if we think about this like a box, we'll just put a center line, kind of that and the toes Kind of connecting to this, if that makes sense. Right. James says, can you give a brief description? Hopefully you got what I was saying, James, about which one we're working from. 
Oh, can you give a brief description of the reference so we know which one to pull up, since they are all feed? Feed? Well, we're working with the first photo, right? The first five are like diagrammatical um, drawings. We're working from the actual, the first photo reference. Okay. Should, it should be fairly self-explanatory. Let, let me know if you can't figure it out and I'll try and help. <coughs> Look at the way the, cur the toes, and then we've got these tendons that actually run from up here, like coming across down this way, but they kind of reveal themselves in this area, down here. All right, just gonna kind of get a sense of that. And then they run kind of down the middle of the, the toe itself. Finally drawing this stuff, especially when we're doing a detailed study like this, patience really is key. You think about these almost like a secondary group. Look at the way the little toe also, look at the way it curves in. It's interesting. <coughs> See this, this pad kind of sitting in here. I'm just going to leave that for now, just come back up here. Okay, so the way I think about this back section where the heel is, look at the way there's, there's almost what feels like the equivalent of like a sneaker heel sitting in here, this pad, right? It almost feels like it's doing this. Like that's exaggerated, but it's a nice way to kind of subdivide as a, as a shape. Maybe I'm a little long in the toe. I might pull into about here, actually. Pull that in a little bit as well. I'll do that as we go. Okay, so we've got like, yeah, we've just got a lot of kind of plane changes, got that kind of thing going on. You go around and then like that. Almost concave, right? Almost, and then come around this way. Thank you very much, Lily. I'll excuse the pun. Hermant says, I've got a five riddle question from the book I bought for free, if you're okay. When you, you've got one question or you've got five, Hermant? You can try one and we'll go from there. Mine still look like weird sandwiches. Well, give yourself a chance here then. Um, what in the Sam Hill is that long tendon running to the side? You mean this one coming down this way? Um, I believe, you know what? I'm just gonna 
I'm gonna check that for you. Because I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Let's have a look. I don't know if I can do this on camera. I don't have a license to use this thing on stream. There we go. Well, <coughs> it's called Fibularis Brevis um, by the looks of things. And it is coming f down the leg. It's, what, it's actually connected, believe it or not. This is fascinating. Um, so it's coming down the leg this way behind the, the fibia here and then coming down here and it's actually connected to one of the um, extensor muscles that have come down the leg so it's coming down this way behind the fibia kind of gets turned there and then meets with what's the name of that bone on the side there oh it's one of the metatarsals okay yeah one of the metatarsals down here it attaches down here there you go yeah, you know, it's funny, I went on Essential Anatomy's site uh, probably about a year ago now, but they were very clear that their product should not appear on well, things like the stream, I think. So I want to be careful of that. I want to respect their wishes. It would be great to be able to use it. I would very much like that, but something like that. And then you might notice that we have like, kind of does this, and then we get a very slight taper in this section here. You, as you may see from the anatomy, um, there's a strap that's coming across here, doing that. Um, facial strap, I'm guessing it is. Um, and that's kind of tapering in, pulling in all of this stuff. That makes sense. Got a little bit of com Oh, that's unfortunate. Here goes the first pencil. Um, there's a tiny bit of compression right about here, very subtle. Once again, we have that, unfortunately, on this particular image, not all of them, but on this one, we have that two light source issue. But it is illuminating the whole foot, so it's kind of a bit of a trade-off. So you can see the... Okay, let's, let's get into these toes a little bit here. Next 
try and be mindful of the spacing between these toes. And look at the way that, and I've said this about hands and fingers before, look at the way we've almost got kind of like a flat surface to the toe and then the turn. Much easier to draw toes and fingers, thinking of them more like long boxes rather than cylinders. They're much more box-like than I think you might think at first glance. the foot, the underside of the foot here. Same in there. This toe is too long. Mm. Yeah, we'll leave it. Okay, so we've got in. Now with all of that set, now I can go in with the thickness of my ankle with a bit more confidence. Something like that. So I'm gonna treat the light source coming from the top as the main light source, and I'm gonna treat the one that's coming from this side, from like the right side, as kind of like a reflected or secondary light. So I'm gonna keep roughly with where the core shadows and, <clears throat> and all that stuff is. Um, yeah. Just. I just might not illuminate the reflected light side quite as much as it is in the reference. And I think that'll help. Really got to try and find a way to simplify the shapes through here. Let's find this shadow form through here. And look at the way that all the way through up here, you kind of get the sense that this is kind of happening. Like almost like a V shape sitting in here where we have the, um, the tibia. And it's connecting to the, um, to the foot, to the, tassels. <laughs> I just drew a weird duck head instead of a foot. Camille, you, it's easily done. Don't, what is the longest word in the dictionary? Is it not? Well, this is a riddle, isn't it? It's not just a question. I thought it was anti-disestablishmentarianism. Um, 
Thanks so much. This weird tendon. Yeah, it, it certainly is. The body is quite amazing, isn't it? I didn't think too much a month. That was my answer. Um, <coughs> Lulu, I am full of useless facts. Don't you worry about it. How are the new pencils working, asked Jeffrey. Well, they were good. As you can see, right at this very moment, I'm actually using one of the old generals. I just snapped the first one of those. Quite soft especially in my gorilla hands. Um, but I like them. I do, I like the quality of the charcoal and I like the mark making that they make. Um, so yeah, definitely working. And I have two more there sharpened. I'm gonna use them. I just didn't wanna use burn through all three on the, on the first sketch. So as you can see with the toe, the pinky, you can almost get really get a sense of that box-like structure, right? Just from the tone, in fact, from all of them to, to some degree or another. some coloring in. Excuse me. Suzette asks a cryptic question. It's a look at a magnified view of the subject. Yes, it's a foot, but about it makes it in fact a foot question mark. It's a man-made label for an object. 
right? What makes it a foot? I, I'm not sure I, I get the question. up some of these details got quite soft quite a pocket of uh, Dark shadow, right, sitting in here gives a sense of the the depth in that area, right? And we'll try and try and get that back a little bit. Someone could be flipping through the channels and see this and think, these people are spending 30 minutes drawing a foot. Yeah, very true. And they're probably like, that's crazy. It's not crazy. Spend 30 minutes drawing a figure so to spend 30 minutes on a foot seems reasonable to me. As I've said many times during the stream, it's one of the reasons why we stay away from certain things in any great detail, like hands, feet, faces, because they're just super time consuming. And exactly to your point, people are going to be like, really? 30 minutes on that? about what I've done here. It's all right. It's fine. It will do. All right, but I might call it there. Um, thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. Um, answer is a mile has a mile between each. This is the book answer. Don't look at me. All right, Hamant, you are you are forbidden from asking any more riddles. Them the rules. You went too far. You went too much, man. You went too deep. All 
All right, done. Let's call it. Not a great drawing. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna obsess over it. Let's move on. Uh, let's look at the next drawing. Ah. Okay. So the, what I liked about this one was I thought it could be nice to actually draw from kind of like mid shin or maybe even down from the knee down. Might just draw the whole thing because it's not a massively different angle in some ways to the foot we just did, but it's kind of looking at it in a slightly different light. So I think it will be useful exercise. Um, but it gives us a chance to see how it connects to the, to the leg proper, right? Exactly, Jeffrey. Can be staring at a foot. Seems seems like uh, makes sense to me. Absolutely. Um, you see, this is the thing with the body, which is so interesting, isn't it? You know, you can look at something like the entire form, and you can draw the entire form. But when you zoom in and you start looking at things in real detail, a whole new world kind of opens up, right? Um, when? Uh, well, look, Jeffrey. Thank you, and I appreciate your strong disagreement. Look, look. Ho hopefully, the, the, like the idea with this is to really kind of. Well, I, I'm hoping I'll make some good drawings, but it's also, it's just, if you got a deeper understanding about what's going on with the foot, then it served its purpose. Thank you. Um, generals versus new pencil. Well, they are made by generals. And I think what generals did was, I think they took their 6B and repackaged it, the old 6B, and repackaged it to this, and put an inferior 6B in the place of where the ones are now. So that's what I think happened. Because this feels, this is primo 3B, and there's no difference between this and the 6B, in my opinion. So many pencils, yeah. Half of these are... Did, well, most of these, almost all of these, are 6Bs by Generals, and they're useless. Someone just rolled under my drawing board. Um, can't use them. So, yeah, big waste of money. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, as I said, I'm gonna draw from the knee. And I do wanna be mindful of Oh, timer. The timer that means nothing. I'm gonna have a quick sip of tea. So proud of the foot I drew, says Tina. Awesome. No, look, feet are hard. Feet be tricky. That's for sure. Actually, I should probably come over here a little bit. I'm gonna just come down, give a very, very light version of where that tibia is. It's gonna be sitting in here. And the, the one thing, if there's anything that's a slight maybe going to throw you with this pose, is 
that calf, the, the two heads of the calf muscles are, oh, sorry, the two heads of the calf muscle are compressed against his other foot, which is flattening out their appearance ever so slightly. Um, but they are coming down this way. When I took these uh, reference photos from other models, or from other reference photos, you know, like full body ones, I um, I did rotate some of them. Like, you know, I think this, this pose, I think he could potentially have been upside down. These feet could have come from an upside down pose, which would also maybe explain the lighting. But anyway. Okay, so I've come down to Once again, I like to subdivide, so I like to come down. So tibia, we can see the, the condyle of the tibia here, right? And it's sticking out there. Then we have behind it, we have the Achilles tendon coming down the heel, which is gonna be about there. And once again, we have so tibia's there. You can almost kind of, kind of see this type of shape. So tib tibia's there. Coming down. Actually, sorry, that is not the tibia. That is the fibula. We are looking at the outside edge. Tibia runs on the inside. Fibula runs on the outside. In fact, Oh, I don't really want to draw on this paper. I'll, if I remember, I'll draw it at the end, the, how, what the structure of the bones looks like. So this little bump you're seeing up here, right, a little bump you see right there, that is the other end of the fibula. So we've got our our mass of metatarsals sitting in this region here. Right, this is actually coming out this way. This line here, I'm thinking more like a center line. Toes start here. And once again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm separating the whole toe from the foot. So the knuckles. This might need to be a bit longer. Let's see. Boom. This is actually okay. The knuckles are kind of here. All right, then we've got, so we're going from this kind of shape here Kind of a flatter shape here. And this little bump you can see here is that going to be that attachment that we saw before, um, right, Lulu? Right in there. Same, same thing again. That strap coming down from the extensor back here, coming down and meeting up with the uh, metatarsal bone. Got once again, we can see that kind of sneaker foot idea it's sitting in there. Nature's sneaker coming down to our padding.
toes are generally, big toes are quite a bit longer than you might think. It's, it's easy to think of them as just like little stubs at the end of your feet, but they're really quite long. And then I'm going to group these once again as a single idea, at least initially, like that. Right, so it's like big toe, all the little piggies next to it. Don't forget, we're going to do hands next week, next Monday. And obviously Thursday will be a regular session. Hold on, one, two, three, four. So my subdivisions need to be a bit better here. She thinks my pinky's over this way. Yeah, I'll come back and clar give clarity to that. All right, so yeah, we've got we've got the spheres of the no, not spheres, but bumps of the knuckles. Sitting in here. Something like that. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. Oh, I never started the timer. Thank you. I also am not reading chat clearly. Um, Brittany says, is it bad that my sketch is great, but I feel like I just copied you instead of truly understanding what I'm drawing? Well, look, you, 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 your understanding will increase with each repetition, right, Brittany? So that's a good place to start. Start off, starting off with a great drawing is um, better that than you copied me and you had a terrible drawing. You, you'll find that your, your understanding, like, that's okay, right? Mimic, mimicry is, absolutely natural and this in the in the developing stages um, that is that is completely normal and then as you you get rid of your wraps you'll find that <clears throat> you'll get a little bit more, you'll understand a little bit more each time. And before you know it, you'll be like, I got my own ideas of how I want to draw that. Thank you very much. You may have noticed also when we're doing like regular, um, regular timed and size figure drawings where we're not focusing on the foot, I have developed somewhat of a shorthand for some of these ideas. But I always, you may have noticed, I always try and draw in this kind of oblong volume sitting in here because I think it really it kind of it's what gives the foot that characteristic um, shape um, just about more than just about any other part of the foot it it helps as a descriptor more than just about anything else Ah, 
I see, went again, one of those uh, Primas. They're just a little delicate. It's fine. Also, I'm probably pressing too hard. Truth be told. See that bone right, right in here. And we've got a very subtle direction change, obviously, where the tibia and the fibia meet with the metatarsals. Um, Suzette, I don't have a problem with black wings at all, it's just they're graphite. I can't work with graphite on the stream. Um, I get too much glare off the page from, for the cameras. They reflect too much. Plus, <coughs> I've got to say, in my experience, and look, to each their own, caveat, to each their own. But it, for me personally, I prefer the Tombow over the Blackwing. If I can only have one graphite pencil, it's the Tombow. Here's a longer one. Um, Tombow Mono. These I find to be superb pencils. So if you're ever on the lookout to try something new, I would say with some confidence that you can try a Tombow Mono and be pleased with the result. Um, wow, Hamant, I know the timer wasn't running. You seem to be really making a point with that. Um, <clears throat> Courtney says, I'm new to studying art. I've had a natural ability, so I want to study more and find my skill, maybe? Yeah, sure. Thinking of the toes as boxes certainly helps. Never thought that. And of course, Brittany, fingers, right? You can think of fingers in exactly the same way. Um, and it will stop you from getting drawing banana fingers if you start thinking in terms of boxes rather than spheres. Um, they'll, you know, if you ask, like, most people that have never really thought about it, what's the closest shape? Most people are going to go, oh, a finger is like a sphere. Mm, it feels that way, but it's not. Once again, look at this this area of tone in here where the form of the um, fibia and then meeting up with the tibia. We get this, and we had this on the last drawing too, this kind of slightly darker pocket through here. There we have our mass, and now we can bring down our tendons a little bit here. to help bring a little bit more 
mais je ne sais quoi. Just hit a bit of cast shadow through here, just for funsies. Then you kind of go like right, so you've got a flattish surface here and then a turn of form into another flat plane here. So even though it's super, 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 super subtle, you've actually kind of got a a band of half tone just sitting in this area in this region right here. You'll notice how I'm just, I pull a tiny bit of tone off the core shadow, just kind of, and I pull it in the direction the form is turning. Never pull it the other way. You'll lose the, the illusion of things moving back in space. But if you pull it the right way and you don't overdo it, it can add a really nice kind of texture to the skin. It can feel, make it feel a little bit more sculptural, if that makes sense. Just don't overdo it. Because then it's like, uh, it becomes a cheap trick. I've probably overdone it. Anyway. Okay, we'll just hit this with a little bit of kneaded erase on. Brevis thingy, exactly. Have to put thingy on the end of that, it's the scientific term. I appreciate your uh, sticking to scientific nomenclature. Um, is there usually a go to person in the animation studio for feet and hand shots, or does everyone become an expert? <laughs> Very interesting question, Doug. No, you know what? Here's the thing. Um, especially drawing, obviously, humans um, are, are particularly tricky. Cartoon hands and cartoon feet are, can be generally easier. Um, you would usually expect your supervising animator to know how to draw those things. Yes, there would usually be someone in the studio who was better at it than most of the others. Um, but they wouldn't necessarily be, have the, their, people wouldn't necessarily go to them with their drawings, if you know what I mean, especially if you, because you see the way, that just for what it's worth, back in the day, back in the 2D days, the way it generally works is you create teams for each character, right? Um, so like take, I don't know, um, The Little Mermaid. So there'd be a Little Mermaid animation team, right? Then there'd be an Ursula, was it Ursula? Not Ursula, what was the, okay, I pick a name, a film I don't remember the characters' names of. Anyway, you get the point. There'd be teams for each, for each animated character. 
and those supervising animators would generally have a pretty good idea how they want to handle the anatomy of their character and they wouldn't generally be going to other supervising animators saying can you help me draw the hands on this it would yeah, there would be an expectation they would know what they're doing now in saying all of that from what i understand <coughs> excuse me back in the day when there was the nine old men at disney if what i've read is is true um, even the other some of the other nine old men when they had drawing issues they would go to milk carl um, who was one of the nine old men and milt was generally considered it, i think from what i understand generally considered to be the strongest draftsman of them all um, and it was kind of a case of you know when the nine old men had problems drawing milt was the one that would do the problem solving. Um, so that's um, that's probably the closest we have as an example of, of what you're referring to there. That makes sense. All right, you know what? I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to leave it there. Bit, bit muddy down down here, but yeah, it's okay. It's a sketch. Cool. All right. Um, hands are easier by default because they are more practiced than feet. Folks usually draw shoes on their characters. Well, I think, I think that, I don't think that necessarily, in my opinion, Lulu, I don't necessarily know if that makes hands easier. I think hands are generally drawn more. But in actual fact, it's kind of, one, one of the ways I look at it is this. There's actually far more potential articulation with the hands, right? With what the hands can do and how they can kind of deform from the, their, we'll call their natural or relaxed state, right? Far more than feet. So <coughs> in actual fact, there could be potential for hands to be far trickier. But generally, as you said, people not only draw their hands, hands more, but people are also, your hands are right here. If your, if your feet were stuck onto your wrists, you probably have a much closer kind of relationship with them visually as far as the nuance to where how things turn and the volumes. If you were able to look at your feet like this and go, oh yeah, look at that mass there, that is a volume, right? So that would be my feeling on it. Um, okay, let's move on to the next pose. Rick says, I was doing tons of two minute hand gesture poses the last two days. Really helped me a lot, quick poses. Yeah, for sure, that, that does help. Um, same with feet, we would, you know, hit some repetition. Um, okay. I could use Carbon fiber reinforced six Bs, honestly. Lulu. Um, that's great, Susan. Good stuff. I tried the Statler mechanical pencil. It's okay. Yeah. I worked for years with mechanical pencils, not doing figure drawing, but for my day job. Good, glad, glad that helps, Michael. I think you're referring to the boxes system. Do you have any happy accidents or happy mistakes in your drawings? Um, they happen, Hemanth, occasionally you could say, but I'm also, if you've listened to the stream for any amount of time, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of happy accidents. Um, for the simple reason it's a happy accident, it's not a repeatable formula. 
Um, so a happy accident is like, oh, well, that's nice. Can I do it again? No, because it was an accident. How did it happen? Um, so if it's something, I, I'd r much rather rely on a system that's repeatable than to, to hope for a happy accident. I <laughs> Um, who's that? So sometimes it's disappointing when there is a style I really want to imitate. Well, I think one of the one of the um, one of the things of becoming a good artist. It, it, and part of your training is the ability to imitate. Because what does imitation, imitation really mean? It means that you're looking at a, the, an artist's idea of design language and you're understanding the language and able to replicate it. So that takes, that's a part of the development as an artist, right? Um, and I think any artist that's really good should be able to look at someone else's style and, and be able to emulate it. But it takes practice. Right? It's, um, okay, this next pose, I picked this and I'm, I'm a little terrified of it. These are just about the hardest angles and poses that you can get for feet, in my opinion. The, the hardest to get a good version of. Um, these three quarter back views. They're just devilish, especially the one with the heel up. It's really hard to not make this look just look like a blob. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with the foot on the right, the one that's planted down. Then I'll, if, if, depending on how long that one takes, I might do the one on the left. I might not. I might move on to the following pose, to the next poses because there's, we've got quite a few here and I don't want to spend too long on drawings I know are going to be bad. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, to some, to some degree. So we'll move on to this. What animation movie have you worked on? Ask Hermanth. Um, I've worked on quite a few, Hermanth. Um, probably easiest if you just go to the About page on my website. If you go scroll down the bottom, you can see the movie posters of all the films I've worked on. But I think I'm on number 18 or number 19 I've worked on now, I think. Going back to 1990, 89, you probably grew up on the movies I, I, I worked on. A month, unless you're older than me, in which case probably not. Well, maybe. Um, all right, lots of pencil talk. Nice to see. A friend of mine told me that my art is really improving. And what is my goal? I don't have one. You don't need to have one. Good for you, Rick. <coughs> um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, let's see. I'm going to come down. As I said, I'm doing just the right foot. We'll see about the left one. It's kind of useful to be thinking in terms of the fact that this foot is going away from us. Oh, before I start this, there is something I do want to just kind of reiterate a point about from the reference, a super important point in my opinion. Um, forget this line right here. I'm just gonna draw quickly from the reference. Uh, just take this shape. We're look, look, if you look at the, which is it? The second reference image in. I think it's honestly, it's probably one of the most important ones. Look at this shape. We're, it's a top down view, right? It's doing so, roughly something like that. All right? 
I think it tells us the most about getting clues on, on the structure of the foot. And then we've got slight protrusion there, which I'm guessing is the ankle bone, and then the heel down here. And then you can see from that subdivision, this kind of doing this, you can even see where the um, the metatarsals sit right about here, right? Coming up to the ankle, which is sitting about here. Then we've got our toes coming up like so. And look at the look at the, the this direction change here. I think this is very very interesting too to give you a sense of the dynamics of the foot. My point being is this: this is the outside of the foot, right? This side. Look at this straight edge. Then we have toes, and then we have a curve on the inside, right? So just as a as a shape really try and, and, and see, uh, at least look for this. It's obviously, it's more subtle um, on, on real feet and from different angles. But this inside curve to this straight, and then look at where this is, right? Relative to where this is. So I was saying, the feet are quite you know, our knuckles are probably, the, the, the toe knuckle things are probably about here. And then the, obviously these are the toes coming down this way. Um, I think this is a really, really important shape for us to be kind of mindful of, okay? Let's go back to the reference. Why do I bring that up? Because when we're looking at this right foot, it's coming down. I, like, it's moving, it's obviously, it's going away from us um, in perspective, but look at that, it, that outer edge of that foot and how s from the heel, from the, from the general mass of the heel, sitting in here, right? Something like that. Look how straight that is, really. I know there's a little, there's a couple of very subtle little turns of form there. Um, <coughs> but anyway, Achilles tendon that's coming up this way and meeting up with those two heads of the calf kind of doing something like that, and the, those heads are doing something like this, right? Going up this way, and as you can see, extending above the knee, and attaching above the knee. Also, oh yeah, one other little thing. Sorry, let me grab that piece of paper again. This is really important too. It's all really important. Um, if we just take the tibia and the fibula, right? Tibia coming down this way, right? Epicondyles at the ends, the little sticky outy bits. Doing something like that, right? This is the tibia. The fibula sits here right, goes down this way, and actually attaches a bit lower. So look at the where, where it, you know, femur's up here, obviously, kneecap's probably about here. But look at the way this fibular bone is, its sticky outy point is here, and the epicondyle of the tibia sticky outy point is here. Point being is when you're drawing when you're drawing a, a foot. Sorry, I've got this, I'm looking at this from the back because I was just drawing a back view. Let me start over. Well, not completely. This, this, this fibula is sitting on the outside. If we're, I'll start over. 
Okay, coming down like this, front view. <laughs> right, got our tibia there. Um, the fibula sits on the outside here, comes down this way and sits here. Why am I telling you all this? Because when you're drawing the ankle, the, and I draw, you, you guys have seen me do this a thousand times, but I draw a really simple shape for that. And then I draw kind of the toes. This ankle bone is always higher up here, right? The inside ankle bone is higher um, than the outside because of this fibula. Why am I telling you that? Why does it matter? Because it gives us a chance to bring in asymmetry into the drawing, right? So if that's here and this is down here, <coughs> we can get some we can get some lovely rhythmical ideas. Um, and I once again, this whole complex metatar or metatarsal thing, when I'm drawing quickly, I'm I'm reducing it down to that, a separation, and then toes, right? Just looking at it from the front. But keep that inside point higher than the outside point. It gives a nice sense of dynamics and it feels right. When you draw those two at the same point, it starts to look stiff and weird somehow. Okay, back to the drawing. And I only bring that up because you can see that here um, on this reference. Um, that tibia bone that's on this side sits quite a bit higher than the fibula, which is sitting in here, right? You can see that sneaker idea once again, okay, going down that way. see up here you can really see that um, epicondyle of the femur sitting in there right actually that's probably not just the femur that's probably the tibia as well excuse me okay so now we have this mass going away from us right Well, we're working from the third photo, Rick. Only eight likes. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah, come on, guys, please. Help me out. Um, Maybe people really dislike feet drawing. Could be that.
thanks, Lulu. Thanks for the airdrop. Yeah, ankles can be confusing, Lucas, I agree. But I honestly, knowing knowing that one is higher and one is lower thing, inside is higher, inside is higher, this mantra that to yourself. Um, honestly, it makes a huge, it makes a bigger difference than you think. You're like, how could just that one thing make a difference? And then you look, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, brutal. Terrible foot. I knew it would be. I think in my whole drawing career, I've done maybe one from this view, which this angle, which I actually like. Um, I don't even know where that is anymore. of the Spielberg movie music. Get out of here. Enough of that. Yeah, I'm not going to do the other leg on this reference. I know it's going to turn out terrible. I'm going to move on to another pose. Also, there's just other drawings that I'd rather do. I know that's a complete cop out. Charcoal, Brittany, charcoal. When are we doing knees? All in good time now. We're doing feet today. Hands next week. If you want to put in a request for knees on the third week, I'll happily take that request. But we already have 
the next this week and next week already figured because we we all there was a meeting votes were had and it was agreed that we would uh you know we would do hands and feet or feet and hands i should say but you want to do knees we can do knees I guess so, Lulu, with regards to dislocating. Well, it's the same. <coughs> Here's the thing, Lulu. If you think about it, it's no different to the radial bone in your hand, right? And, and its function, right? Because you know what's interesting? Did we go through this before? If you put your hand here, and you do this, your radial bone turns around like that, but this bone doesn't move. There you go. So I'm guessing it's working in the same way as the radial bone of the forearm. Charcoal and magic. Charcoal the mess. Yes, the Achilles tendon is, is quite something. Um, they also make a really loud noise when they snap. Where was it? Like, well, you guys wouldn't know this reference, I don't think. Was it, I forget where I heard this, but someone was in a squash court and someone's Achilles tendon snapped and apparently it sounded like a whip being cracked. I don't know if that's true. Allegedly. Allegedly, supposedly. So we've got 30 minutes left. Here's what I'm proposing. We've got two, I, I wanna hit this foot front on foot. I don't wanna to spend too long on this one. We've done a couple which are kind of examining the, the areas of the front. And I want to do the next pose, this one of the foreshortening with the calf and the lovely light and tone on it. This one is just going to be fun. And then we probably are going to call it. And that leaves one, two, three, four, five, six more. The last two I also wanted to have a crack at. But alas, we're not going to have time. We could do them in feet part two down the line at some point. I will leave these reference images up, so for those of you who want to continue practicing, we'll do two more today. We'll do this front foot, and as I said, we'll do that, we'll do reference image number five. And then I'll leave the rest for you guys to look at and make an analysis of. Like, we're not gonna do it now, but if you look at that very last reference photo, gives you a really great sense of the under, underside of the foot. In fact, maybe we should do that one instead of the one with the cup. I don't know. You guys chime in. We will do the front foot now, okay? Then you, you guys vote whether we do reference image number five or the very last image in the pack, which would be number nine. So five or nine after we do this front pose. You guys have the time it takes me to do this pose to get your votes in. Okay. See, it's a democracy around here. Yeah, I have not heard this about Achilles tendons. Yeah, Achilles tendons are known to snap. I know a guy, but another one, where a bodybuilder in a gym doing squats and his Achilles tendon snapped. Yeah. Five, five, nine, nine. Someone's gonna have to count these up for me at the end. All right, anyway, let's move on. Let's do this next pose. It's front, front foot. Once again, look how high the ankle bone is on the inside. 
right? The fibula. And I'm going to use that to come down this way. It's going to roughly give me where my fibula is. Fibula, tibia. Fibula, tibia. Look at this very kind of triangular shape coming off here for these uh, metatarsals. <clears throat> oh, we've almost got this kind of thing going on here. But strong, pretty strong graphic shape coming in through here. that toe, little pinky toe, the nail is on the side, like that. I bet you this guy's a dancer. Oh, I just wears bad fitting shoes. How square those that look look at the big toe for example look how box like and square that is just doing this Interesting how the tendons for the toes on the left hand side all kind of seem to have an origin point coming out from over here and from down here and kind of through this way. Right, so we can use that as like a long line of rhythm. Oh, we've got some boats in. So we got nine, five, nine, five, nine, 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 eight and a half, five. That's a bit of an even split, isn't it? Well, no, it isn't. We'll have to, looks like I'll have to count. Are you rocking a shorter point, Care? What are you talking about, Rick? Shorter point on my pencil? I don't know. Seems about normal. Unless you're <coughs> talking about something else. Am I missing the nuance of a joke? 
possibly. Okay, look at the way the, the, the second toe in. Look at this lovely kind of step down that you have there. Little things like that. But notice it's not really that prominent on all toes. Each toe kind of has its own little characteristic thing going on. And you want to be mindful of that and not only observe it, but bring it into your drawing. Because I've found that when you try and like formularize them or draw them all the same, it looks weird. You want to, you want to give them that individual character. to use the very strong light to help describe form. See, these things are soft. It's unfortunate. But they've all pretty much gone on me. The other thing with toes is the nail direction and orientation will do an awful lot for helping describe whether how they're sitting in space. I'll try and show you what I mean in a sec.
Are tendons like ribs taboo? Good question, Rick. Um, they can be. One of the things that we've got, what's nice here, is we've got a relatively open space on this side, and then the 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 tendon action is kind of happening here. So it works as kind of a natural subdivision. Certainly something I would be I would be mindful of and try and be cautious of, though. Um, yeah, you you have the potential to to run into that kind of similar kind of issue, right? Yeah. Puppy's names yet? Yeah, we're still working with that um, temporary placeholder name of um, Penny. But I just can't believe that's her name forever. Although it's been a few weeks now, so. I feel like there's a better name waiting for her. She was at the vets today, she's not well. Poor little baby. All right, I think that'll do it. <clears throat> um, is it serious? I don't think so, Rick. Like, she's doing, like, in herself, she's fine, but she's been having a little bit of uh, blood coming out with her, um, her business which isn't necessarily great, but it's not necessarily also necessarily a reason to panic with a puppy, apparently. Anyway, we're, going, we're doing some tests and uh, um, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, let me see.
I want to see what the, the general consensus was. Okay. Lulu's on the fence with the, I think it was thinking 10, but otherwise five seems more interesting. I'm going to take that as a 10, because it's the first thing that you said. Or a nine. So we got one, two, three. How many times is Rick voting? Rick's <coughs> fudging the numbers here. Nine, nine, nine. 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 Five. Five. There's more nines. All right. Let's go to the post number nine. The last one. It is difficult. This is going to be a harder pose than the other one. Puppy things are very. What is that? Ten, not nine. Oh, you know, sorry, guys. <laughs> I've been messing up. There's eleven poses, so I meant eleven. <laughs> eleven or five. I thought there was nine in total. Eleven or five. That's what we're really talking about. Not nine. Forget nine. We did a nine already. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Five wins by default. Let's just do five. It's just like, let's, it's just... I think it'll be more, a bit more interesting. 11, says Jaeger. Five wins by default. 11. Oh, easy. 11, then. Oh, that's a lot of 11s. All right. All right, 11. Let's do it. OK. You've 11 wins. Let's just do it. Doesn't really matter. You guys can do. I, I would honestly. I would. I would. I would work with number eleven in your own, or, as, or with the rest of the ones that we're not doing. Uh, I'll leave. As I said, I'll leave them up. Maybe when we come back around and do feet again, we can hit the second half of this set. That'd be nice, right? Maybe we won't leave it too long to do feet again. Like, you know, it'll be maybe a month or two, but maybe we won't leave it longer than that. I think um, given that feet are such an important part of the body, it couldn't hurt to review them again sooner rather than later, right? Okay, number 11, it's a doozy. It'd be a doozy. Okay, now, I'm going to just work my way through these little stub pencils. That's what they're here for. Smythman is a Polish name. I don't think so, Rick. I don't think so. I think it's, uh, I think it's just English. See, it comes from, my, my dad is from Birmingham, and I think up there they pronounce it Smitherman. So my dad moved away from Birmingham, promptly got the accent out of himself, and changed Smitherman to Smitherman. Hey, Margo. Um, yeah, so there you go. He used to talk like this. That could have been my voice had I been brought up in Birmingham. Oh, I'm gonna have the Brommies on to me now. It's not how we talk. Yes, it is. Finding 
gets very, very loose idea. Actually, I'm gonna pull over just a little bit here. Oh, timer. I've been really bad with the timer today. As I said, I don't think it really matters, but just in the interest of keeping her man happy. See that even though it's a little bumpy, see that long flat edge right on this side coming down this way. And we obviously have the heel. Sitting in here. Look at the way that heel kind of then like a little platform sitting here and then it steps down. And you can see it once again, like we've got this kind of padding coming down this way to the split of the, um, the pads of the foot. I like to think of these almost kind of like a single idea coming through here. toes <laughs> a lot going on here so you see the way I'm finding this kind of separation point f f where the toes attach they kind of are attaching if we could think of it volumetrically it's probably something like that right our form is turning here and our toes are attached in here Once again, treating that, those four toes, those four little toes like a single idea, just while I block them in. So they're sitting here, kind of like that. <clears throat> and that big toe is sitting over here. Once again, that mass that we've been discussing all session, sitting in here, the metatarsal bulge. Oh, I see, Rick. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm.
Oh. Okay. We got the side plane, front plane. Something's bumping me here. Hmm. All right, let's keep going. Pretty stable shape with the metatarsal. Yes, um, Lulu, they absolutely are a, a, a stable shape, and you can always look for you know at the front of the foot, look for the, where the cone kind of starts, if that makes sense, and that will really help bring um, consistency. time-wise. We'll go for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to run. Because I got a, a puppy that needs feeding. And I have to feed her myself because very specific instructions on how to feed her with the medication. Oh, 
It sounds like she's getting uh, antsy. Okay, so we have these toes that do need a little bit of subdivision. See how month. Thank you, Margo. Yeah, she'll be fine, I'm sure. He says, you know, when they're puppies, I think you also you just tend to kind of. I think you just worry a little more because they're they're just like they're still developing, you know. one feels a little less finished than the others um, but I really should go feed the little poppet um, I think that was a nice uh, I think that was a nice change of pace today I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope um, and I'm I'm glad it was useful. Um, so yeah, we will, um, you know, we will meet back on Thursday. Thursday, we will do a regular figure drawing session. We will draw the full body, um, as we are known to do. And then next Monday, hands. We will go through the same process with a series of hands, and I'll have some reference for us to have a quick look at. Please feel free to tackle the rest of those uh, poses. I think it'd be a nice exercise. Might just do it myself, you never know. 
um, will certainly come back to feet at some point. We will hit knees, hands next, then maybe the following Monday we'll hit knees. Someone asked for knees. Um, and we'll go through different, different areas of the body where we will call it the zoom in uh, session, where we just kind of look at something in a bit more detail and um, you know, make an analysis of what are we looking at. Because um, if we understand what we're looking at, we, it just helps, helps us look at what we, you know what I mean. <clears throat> For example, those, that metatarsal cone, we'll call it, uh, that Lulu named, uh, which I think is apt enough. Uh, little things like that, if we understand that, 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 that they're there, we can look for them and we can help go, oh yeah, that's an anchor point that meets up with the ankle and that's kind of like my starting point. It's always useful to have things like that and sometimes when we just get together as a group, um, you know, we can find these things and, uh, you know, um, we can discuss them. All right, guys, um, thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out the door. Much appreciated. And um, yeah, let me see your feet drawings. Be very curious to see how you guys did. Um, in the meantime, look after yourselves and I'll see you on Thursday. All right, cheers. <laughs>